Morning. It's been a while since I've had a video posted here, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit directly about some design stuff around straw bale. Now, one of the one of the things about design that really makes a house neat and interesting is when you break up the exterior facade. So you see a lot of houses. If you look at inexpensive developments, they'll have two-story houses that are, uh, you know, directly above each other. So the first story goes from you know the ground up eight feet and then in that same plane starting right there going up another eight feet you have the second story so you end up with this very flat facade of the house uh, usually it's the front facade side facade the whole thing you end up with a very big rectangle or box or oddly shaped building but it's always straight up and down and there's a reason for that it's a lot easier to build that way if you're building where the load is bearing directly on the structure beneath it, then you're, you're transferring that load really simply from one load uh, path, or excuse me, from one from one floor through a load path down into the second floor. Now, breaking up that exterior facade provides a much nicer design. So you can actually have a house where the downstairs comes up and then maybe has a little roof on it, and then you set back into the building and you go up again, or you might want to overhang a little bit. So by breaking up that facade, you get a much more um, interesting design. The problem is that you have a lot of load coming down on interior walls. So you either have to have interior bearing points or you have big beam work. Now we, we've put some houses together that have uh, kind of two design functions which, which contrast each other a little bit and make it a little bit difficult to build. And that's using what I just spoke about of offsetting the, the second story so that it comes into the building and then having the first floor with a very open floor plan. So what that means is there's no bearing walls for uh, to be able to support the load of that second story. So we're dealing with large beams. I'm talking sometimes 8 by, we had an 8 by 22, uh, so 8 inch wide by 22 inches deep, and it was 18 feet long spanning across this room, and it, and it was beautiful. I mean, if you, if you do it right and you use the, the, the right beams, you can actually expose them and make it a, a beautiful feature of the home. But be aware that that's a little more expensive to build with. The, the large beams are expensive. And they're very difficult to lift and get into place. Sometimes you need a crane to move the, the beams into place. So it's stuff to consider. Yeah, you may want to have a house that has more design features to it, but at the same time, you want to balance that with the cost and the ease of construction. Um, the way I build the houses that we build, they're typically higher end, and so we have the ability to do some of those more interesting designs, and, and I think it's well worth it. The finished product is something that, that really... Um, it, it stands out. You know, you, you can see that the house, that there's attention to detail, that there's attention to design, and uh, it, it comes out with a much nicer finish. So again, just keep that balance in mind as you're designing. I say this a lot. It's, it's always easier to change a design on paper than it is to change it once it's built. So get the design right the first time, knowing all of the pieces that have to fit into that puzzle. Talk to you soon.